So glad you read my life. you for the covenant of life. Many started this month with us. Now we are no more. Many are in pains. Many are shedding tears. Many have lost their loved ones. Many have lost their health. Many have lost their marriages. Many have lost their peace. Many have lost their jobs. The Lord will thank you because here we have this power in good health, in happiness, in joy, and in celebration. It is not by our making all of it, by your grace. Accept that thanks for this grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we surrender all to you, Lord. We know we have sinned against and against the of unrighteousness and enter into your kingdom. Father, any sin in our lives that will chase us away from your kingdom, let the blood of your son Jesus Christ for just this hour in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, create in us a new spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every contrary spirit. We come against every negativity. We come against every spirit of pain and sin. We are wherever they are. Father, set them on fire now in the name of Jesus. Let every agenda of the wicked to terminate our lives. Let every agenda of the wicked to catch our destinies. Let the agenda of the wicked to cause us tears this year. Let it catch fire in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Behold, it shall surely gather. Father, we are ready the enemies are gathering right now against this ministry, against our marriages, against our jobs, against our children. Father, the Bible says, For our sake, they shall fall. In the name of Jesus, our enemies shall fall. They 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 shall fall. Their arrows will backfire. Their altars will catch fire. In the name of Jesus, whosoever is not happy that you are alive, Father, send them to any grave. In the name of Jesus, whosoever wants us to shed bitter tears this year, Father, baptize them with tears. In the name of Jesus, we cover ourselves. We cover this church. We cover every source with the blood of Jesus and with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 In Jesus, the Father, we surrender all to you this hour. Lord, it's by your grace that you have called us into your fold. Anything in us that will make us to speak wrong, the Father put us in Jesus' name. Amen. Make us, O oh God, a new vessel in your vineyard, fit for your purpose, to be used to depopulate the kingdom of darkness Amen. and to populate your own kingdom. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to give God a better hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's open our hands. Go to page 42 as we sing, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. Praise the Lord. Let's open our hymn book. One, two, go. Stand up, stand up for 
Jesus is soldiers of the cross. He dies for the Father. He comes to suffer From victory unto victory, his army shall be. Your husband will fail you one day. A day will come when you will wake up and the man will be gone. 
a day will come when you wake up and the woman will be gone. A day will come when you wake up and the children will no longer be in the house. They will have been on their own. Then who will you trust in or where will you put your trust? Let's open our Bible, beloved, to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. The arm of flesh will fail you. The pain we are going through as individuals is as a result of you and I putting our trust in wrong people. We so much place emphasis on the flesh rather than placing emphasis on the Creator. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through to 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding, on the end of our own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We are looking at what is titled, the arm of flesh will fail you, or living on man's understanding. The arm of flesh will fail you, or living on man's understanding. The understanding of man, let's come down to our earthly level so that you understand some things about life. When we were young, or five years ago, you had a plan. If I ask you now, are your plans now a reality? The answer is no. Why? Because you formulated that plan outside God's plans for your life. You designed a plan for your future, and you erase God from that plan. Many of us, when we were growing up, we have a picture in our head. I want to marry a very pretty lady. That will be this. That will be that. That will be this. That will be that. I want to marry a man that has a six pack. That has a seven pack. All your heart desires there. Are they now in existence? No. And then time you look back, you are regretting. I, I knew if they could give me a chance again, I will make it right. Even if you are given a million chance again, you will still make mistakes. Why? Because all your plans were outside the scope of Christ. And I will give you one personal example. While I was coming, the Lord reminded me. He reminded me again. The word that was given to me when I was passing through trials and tribulation was trust in God. Trust in God. And I will give you the prayer books that surrounded it. When I was in South Africa, God gave me a business. Internet cafe. All my hope in life was centered on the business. All my life was in that business. Money was coming. I never had the belief that one day those things could perish. Every time I go, anywhere I go, it's like when people call you chairman, you feel like, oh, you are rich. But one day, the enemies came and boggled the place. And when the thing happened, they did it three times. The last time I cried, I shed tears. And the Lord showed me something. I will share me and share with you before, but I will say it again. When I was coming, the Lord reminded me that tell my people, they are not trusting me. They are trusting in flesh. That's why they are facing problems. That day I slept. And the Lord showed me a plant. The plant was planted in a very dry place like a desert. And it was rooted out from the desert and planted onto a very big field, filled with grasses, green grasses. And an old man came and told me to my face, trust in God. Up to tomorrow, that word is still in my brain. There are times as flesh, when some things happen, you forget to trust God. You start trusting in flesh. I want you to pray this prayer this morning, beloved. What you are passing through is as a result of you not trusting God. Say, so anything in my life. You see, you are still trusting yourself. You are still believing that it is, your, it is by your making that you can do things. It is by your qualification that you can open doors. It is by carrying the Bible that makes you to become a pastor. No. If you don't trust in God, you are bound to fail. Say, so anything in my life. Trusting in the flesh. Come out and die. In the name of Jesus, anything in my life, trust it in the flesh. Come out and die. 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 Anything in my life that is putting my trust in the flesh. Come out and die. Come out and die. In Jesus' name, we are praying.
Let's have a seat. The understanding of men. Let's come down to the church level. It is man's understanding to start saying, oh, the church must grow like this. When the church does not grow the way you desire it, you will be feeling pain. It's like, why are members not coming? Why are these not coming? You are not putting your trust in God. You are putting your trust in man. Oh, why is the offering 200? There was a pastor that someone showed on the Facebook, on the social media. The pastor was giving out on, on a Sunday that the offering in the church was $200. That means the man's mind was centered on the people and on their pockets, not on God. The church may be with only one person, and the church may not lack any good things. And the church may be filled with people, and still the church will still be in lack. You may have connections, and still you may still wallow in poverty. And you may have no connection, but God by your side, and you will be a blessing to nation. I decree by the decree of heaven from today that the kind of greatness that only God can give shall come your way in the name of Jesus. I say shall come your way in the name of Jesus. The arm of flesh will fail you. All those people that you are believing they will help you, they cannot help you. It is only God that can help you. Let's quickly see some things in the Bible. In 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 8. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 8. The Bible says, With him is an arm of flesh. Ezekiel was telling the people, When Zedekiah, the king of Assyria, came to invade them, Zedekiah was boasting. Zedekiah was saying, I will deal with them. But Ezekiel told the people, in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 8, with him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the word of Ezekiah, king of Judah. Zedekiah was boasting on the flesh. It was boasting on chariots. It was boasting on connections. But Ezekiah depended on God. I pray from today that you will solely depend on God and not on man. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm 20. Let me even tell you something. The tithe and the offering that, that has now become a fight in the church. Anytime you are about to give, something will tell you, if I pay my tithe, I will not have money to feed myself. So be it for you. Because you have called it that way. That means your life is trusting on money, not on the provider. And whenever you trust on the provision, not the provider, you are bound to be disappointed. Because one day, the provider may decide to turn his back against you. And what will you spend? That job that you are holding, that you are depending so much on, if God takes away the job, what will you do? Have you ever asked yourself, Oh, my car, my house, my this. If God takes away those things, what will you do? They are asking you to serve God. You think it's by, uh, in fact, their own is too much. Wait till when God visits your life and break you down and say, my son, my daughter, there, I have more blessings for you than this material things that is tying you down. Tell yourself, I will trust in God. You don't believe. Say, I will trust in God. I will trust in God. Some are trusting in chariots. Some are trusting in friends. Some people trusted in Babangida, former military of state. Now he is not relevant again in the history of Nigeria. When the people that are in current power are talking now, he has no say. He's still alive, but he has expired. May you not expire. But if you are with God, whether there is a regime or there is no regime, you will forever be relevant. If you are with God and God is your strength, even in death, your death will still be relevant. I pray in the name of Jesus that from now, the Lord will be your strength. Amen. In Psalm 20, verses 7 through to 8, 
Bible says some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. That means some people can put their trust in material things, but it will surely bring them down. Isaiah chapter 31 from verses 1 through to 3. Isaiah 31 from verses 1 through to 3. The Bible says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. What to them that trust in chariots because they are many. What to them that trust in their salaries because the money is much. What to them that trust in their pastors because the man cries out. What to them that trust in their riches because they have great wealth. What unto you that trust in flesh that go down to Egypt. Because they are many, and in most men, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the only one of Israel. God is causing whosoever is not looking unto God, is saying woe to them. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise, and will bring evil, and will not call back his word. But we arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that walk in iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. Whatever you are trusting, they are wings. They are not God. They will fly away. No matter what you hold, they are vanities. They will fly away. Get some bitter truth right. You are in this world alone. Whatever is making you not to serve God, they are wings. They will fly away. They are vanities. They will disappear. No, the Egyptians are men and not God. And they are horses, flesh, and not spirit. With the Lord shall stretch out his hand. But he that heaven shall fall. You see, he that helpeth them shall fall, and he that opened shall fall down, and they shall fail together. Whosoever does not trust in God, whatever they are trusting, the Bible says, they shall both fall. Look at all the rich people that you know, who were once boasting that they were in control. Where are they today? Where are they today? They came, they ran like fire. Like fire, they poured with, with petrol. Now, their rain is gone forever. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through to 8. Jeremiah 17, from verse 5 through to 8. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, Cause be the man that trusted the man. man. Trust in God and let God bring you men that will help him. Don't be saying, oh, I have people in government. I know someone in National Rock. Who are they? They are flesh. The person you know today may be dead tomorrow. Then what will become of your hope? Some people now, the only thing they know is they will stop pastor's number. It pains me when people are putting their hope in man. The pastor that is calling his number, the pastor may be dead by tomorrow. Then what becomes of your hope? If you check some people's phone, their contact is 90% pastors, prophets. Any small thing, prophet, from Zimbabwe, he can see vision. What happens to your own eyes? Must I see what you are wearing? Let's be practical, beloved. When I was coming, I was going to the Lord told me that there are two spirits that control a man. The spirit of God 
and the spirit of the devil. If your life is clean and holy, the spirit of God will dwell inside of you and direct your path. But if you are living in sin, the other spirit will be directing that path. And fear is the first thing that is evident that a man is not having the spirit of God. So when you are studying man's number, men's number, and you have no iota of Bible in your life, you are being corrected or being directed by the demonic spirit. So, some people, they will not pay tithe in the church, but they pay tithe to strange pastors, strange prophets that will not... Let's be practical, beloved. You are telling me to pray for you. Am I right? Hello? Hello, church? Pastor, pray for me. Abby? They are saying, Pastor, will pray for you. If I say, in Jesus' name, God bless you. When I turn back, will I continue praying for you? Hello, sir? Will I continue praying for you? Don't I have my own problem? So I will leave my own problem. And I will carry your own problem on my head. God forbid. You have your own mouth. You are being trained by God. You have the Bible. And you expect me to be praying for you. For how long will I keep praying for you? For how long will I keep not seeing like babies? So learn some basic fact of life. Stop putting your trust in flesh. Depend on Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Live a holy life and let the Spirit of God direct you. Many of us will have been given, we have been sold negative prophecies. And because we are not of God, we buy into the prophecies and we have been enslaved by those fake Antichrist prophets. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 to 8. Thus say, Lord, cause be the man that trusted the man, and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart depart from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh. You can see, <laughs> whosoever trusted the flesh shall not see good when good cometh. That means when you are trusting in the flesh, there is a danger of missing out on good things when they are coming. And it shall be like it in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the past places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Here, verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. He shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out our roots by the river and shall not see when it cometh, but a leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Blessed is the man that trusted in God. When you trust in God, the first thing that will come is you will have peace of mind. When Corona is killing, your mind will be at peace. When people are crying, your eyes will be dry of bitter tears. When people are running enter and scatter, you, your life will be at peace. Because your trust is not in man. Your trust is in God. Tell yourself, I will trust in God. Say, I will trust in God. I will trust in God. In the name of Jesus. There are some facts that I want us to know. Number one, whosoever knows the way or whosoever helps you to reach up can bring you down. Get it right. You that you are bent on saying you have connection, you have contact. Anybody that helps you to go up they can bring you down. I'm not being proud, but I will not bow down to you for you to help me. Bowing down to man to help you. When they help you, you will be a slave to them forever. Why? The day you turn your back against them, they will bring you down. Fact. So when you are trusting, you like, oh, that sister has helped me. He said, now look at all the great men. Don't let me say great. Look at all the people that are preaching gospel that are now falling 
who brought them down, people that catapulted them up. Let God take you up, and God will never allow any man to bring you down. But let man take you up, the same man will bring you down. Ah, that pastor is going to help me for promotion. They will make you to be great. But the day you refuse to dance to them, they will break you down. Number two. When you are against your helpers, you are on your way down. When you are against your helpers, you are on your way down. Number three. No other power can save you from the hands of your mighty and terrible enemies, but God. No other powers can save you from the hands of the mighty and the terrible enemies, but God. One Baba will help me. He says, I should bring chicken. They, they will eat your chicken and they will put your enemy in more bondage. Number four. When the flesh is your support, your reign, your tenor becomes temporal. When the flesh is your support, your reign and your tenor becomes temporal. I will explain to you. When the person that is helping you is in power, as soon as they finish their tenor, your own tenor will not finish. Because the new person coming, they will not want to keep you because you will be a traitor. Why can't you be a low ranger with Christ? Be like Elijah. Tell me the friends of Elijah and Elisha. They have no friends. Then they shook the world before they left. Why do you need someone to be saying you are becoming a boy boy to somebody? Ah, that pastor. Ah, that, that, that general is. Who are the general things? I love John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness. He was not a crowd seeker. He was a low ranger. He believed so much in God and he trusted in God for the fulfillment of his ministry. He was not looking for 4,000 crowd. Jesus pulled thousands, but it was never recorded that John the Baptist pulled thousands. The people were coming. The Bible never gave us the amount of people that came to listen to his sermon. But it was not like, oh, me to have to have a cathedral. No, he preached the gospel. And no one was too big for John the Baptist to speak against. The same thing with Elijah and Elisha. They so much believed in God who called them. And they operated in that God. And that God worked for them. Next. The flesh. The support of the flesh will make a man to dear God. Look at all those people that are talking heresy against the body of Christ. They so much believe in one support, the flesh. Some of them they believe so much in their money. Some in their evil occultic association. And they say, where is God? And the day, the devil that is supporting them turn their back, the day you see their nakedness. Next. The arm of flesh will make you to have confidence and pride in yourself. Whenever you see somebody, some people say, you know, I pray for you. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, I pray for you. Did I say did I tell you that you are going to become great? I pray for you. Who are you to say you pray for somebody? You can pray, but God answers things. But when you are Depending so much on the flesh, you start speaking as if maybe you are God. The coronavirus has humbled so many so-called arrogant and pride so-called people that are ministering. I won't call them pastors because they, because they are not. Thank God for coronavirus. I built a cathedral of 50,000 sitters. Then, during the coronavirus, how many people will go to church to go and sit in that dome? 50,000 dome. People now they were taking the place of God. And God got angry and released those corona. said, go and deal with them. And God kept quiet. During the time, you and I were safe. Am I right? Did you have to cry for bread? Do you have to cry to fuel your jet? 
You have to cry to go and buy bread. But some people are crying of when they are dead because the money was no longer coming. Their trust was in flesh. They never trusted in God. I beg of you, it is a bitter lesson. You are going places God is going to make us great. But when you get there, never you allow the arm of flesh to ruin your life. Next. The arm of flesh will always bring the wrath of God upon a life. When you so trust in yourself, you are, you are inviting God's anger. Anyone that is believing that there's nothing anybody can do, I am this, they are inviting God's anger. Open your Bible with me. Act of Apostles chapter 12, verses 21 to 24. The Bible says, and upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout. Herod sat down. He was happy. He was talking like God. He said, yes, who can be like me? Me, Herod. Here what happened. People were saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately, when people exalted error above God, immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him. Because he gave not God the glory. So whenever you are depending on the arm of flesh, and you are giving yourself glory, you can get the slap of the angel of God. Angel of God can slap you. That is what happened in this generation now. Angel of God slapped the whole world now with coronavirus. Why? Because so many churches we now became like gods. People no longer fear God. They fear the church leaders. They fear government. They fear environmentalists. And they ignore God. And the angel became so angry. Say, who are those that refuse to give homage to God and slap the whole world with Corona? And the whole started shaking now and see what happened. And it was eating of worms. Error the king. After receiving the slap, or when he was smut, or when they kicked him, whether they kicked him, whether they threw something at him, but he was eaten up by worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. After that error was slapped and was eaten by one, I would say the word of God grew and multiplied. Hear this, beloved. Anytime you are being reminded to serve God, you have another God. Get it right. Anytime Pastor Nick has to call you, say, don't you know there is service today? You are trusting in someone else, not God. Because if you are trusting in God, you will never miss the appointment with your creator. Number two. If you are changing churches, or you are changing pastors, or you are bending down to every program being organized by anyone, you are trusting in flesh, not in God. You know, get what God is trying to teach us today. God in this place is not different from God in Nigeria. It's not different from God in Canada. It is the way you and I are approaching God that differs. So when somebody is coming from somewhere and says, oh, that person is bringing anointing. What happened to your own anointing? Can't you develop yourself? Can't you say, Lord, here I am. Start using me, break me down, reward me, make me a vessel, be for your use. Next. Show me someone that hates the Bible and that hates teachings. And I'll show you someone who is trusted in the flesh. When you hate the Bible, you hate teachings, that means you are trusting in something. When you wake up in the morning, you can't study the Bible, you can't pray. You have a God. You have a small God that you are serving. You are driving to work, you cannot even say prayer in your mind. You are, you are communicating with the Spirit. 
There are two spirits. Either you communicate with the spirit of God or the, the, the spirit of the devil. In your home, you cannot pray. Then you are communicating with one spirit. You can say, no, we don't pray on this, that, and that. Definitely, if you don't pray, there must be another spirit that is occupying the mind of the people in the house. And say, ah, in fact, I pray, things are not happening. God is not a magician. For prayers to be answered, you need to develop, you need to have a relationship. For me to get to your house, there must be a relationship. Am I right? For me to wine and dine with you, there must be a relationship. Even though I'm your pastor, there are some places you will call me, I will never go, no matter how close may be. But when we have relationship, you can call me 24 7 and we pick your call. But when there is no relationship, the same thing we are doing with God. Only on Sundays when we know pastor, we call pastor, they give same text, we come to church. Apart from Sundays, online services doesn't bother us. And when there is a problem, pastor should pray and there must be a quick microwave answer. I am not God. If you don't develop relationship with that God, who will answer prayers? It depends on the state of the mind of God that time, whether to answer you or not to answer you. And can you fight him? Can you pray God? Can you challenge him? What are the causes of this trusting in the arm of flesh? Number one, unbrokenness. Unbrokenness. When they are not broken. Number two, incomplete deliverance. Unbrokenness. Number two, incomplete deliverance. Number three, poor biblical and spiritual understanding. When you don't understand Bible, you start believing that it's your power. Number four, wrong messages and doctrines. Wrong messages and doctrines. Number five, Wrong fellowship with the enemies of God. When you start keeping friends who are not godly, they will turn your heart against God and you start blaspheming against your Creator. Number six, spiritual illiteracy. When you are spiritually illiterate. Number seven, this one is for ministers. Wrong ministerial purposes. When a minister of God is having his own personal agenda, they will be trusted in the flesh. Number eight. Foundational pollution. Foundational pollution. When someone is from a deadly and dirty foundation, when they grow up and when they are great in life, the foundation will catch up with them. I remember many years ago, there was a church. I won't call the place a church. There was a place where they meet and they said they because if the, a church is being headed by a pastor and the pastor is being directed by the Holy Spirit, that's a church. Not a place where the magicians are coordinating people. We have so many magical areas now. So in this church, no, in this area, anytime there is the service finished. The man used to do some funny, funny things. Later he said eh, that uh, he was from Ikonoko's background. Ikonoko is, uh, what is the thing in, in English? A masquerade that normally grows tall and short. So one day, you know, when your foundation is not broken, or when the foundation is too dirty, it affects you. When you are from a polygamous Muslim, let me be honest with you, one, at times you be telling your mind, if my wife is beef, I will change her. That is the mindset of a polygamist. So your foundation will be speaking if you don't deal with it. One day the man, after collecting offering, they counted the offering, the offering was not much. And he said, if you are going to get a you know guy. It was costing us in the church. Ah. But if this man is from a very godly foundation, the word curses will not have come out of his mouth. He will have blessed the people and talked to them in a godly way. So, wrong foundation will make a man 
to trust the flesh. Next, the enemies. When the enemies are after you and you don't know your God, you will end up trusting in the flesh. Lastly, envy and jealousy. When you start living a life of jealousy and envy, you want to show to people that you are someone when you are not. You trust in the flesh. When you start hearing people say, do you know who I am? There is a problem. There is a problem. If a lion is telling the animals in the, in the jungle that, don't you know I'm a lion? There is a problem. Then, what must we do? Number one, daily we must be rededicating our lives to Christ. Every day, surrender to Christ. Let people be telling you, every day I pray for forgiveness of sin. It is your own prayer. You are not praying for them. I can be asking God for forgiveness every day. That is my own prayer. Don't concern yourself with my own life. Why is Pastor praying about forgiveness? Is he falling in sin? Is he committing? You pray your own. Pray your own. Work out your own salvation. Don't be looking at me. Look at your own life. No, point my foundation. Uh, is Pastor from the position? Point, pray your own prayer. Set to your own score with your maker. Every day, you need to you need to be rededicating your life to Christ. Number two, we need to be subjecting ourselves to regular prayer and fasting. Not just checking the prayers of one minute. Regular prayer and fasting. Devote a day of the week, I'm begging you. Don't be waiting for 70 days to come before you start fasting. 70 days come, but once a year. Give yourself one day in a week. Try it. Fast the 12th. And that day, he said, Lord, I want to see your face. Just one day. Don't fast the 6th or 12th. Fast the 12th in the afternoon. Regular fasting and prayer. By the time you do it for seven weeks, you will come and say, Pastor, the Lord is asking me to minister in church. I say, Yes. The Lord truly has spoken to me in day. Because you will be connecting. But when you don't fast, you don't pray, you are waiting for 70 days. And in 70 days, you have turned it to be like a culture. Like, let me just say, I thank you for prayer and fasting. I thank you for something of my soul. I thank you for letting me. You're just reciting and you have, have turned it now to something like of a joke. Next. Dissociate yourself from ungodly and proud hearted people. Separate yourself from ungodly and proud hearted people. People who are always boasting about material things. Don't you know I have this? Separate yourself from that. Don't you know I have connection in Asura? I have connection in Canada. Separate yourself from them. They cannot help you. Join your faith with people who are godly, who speaks the word of God. Next. Change your mind. Change your mind and start focusing on Jesus. No matter what you want, remove your mind from whatever you want and start focusing on Jesus. And lastly, pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As a Christian, your Christianity is not complete, not until when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your Christianity is what? It's not complete, not until when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, the calling of the disciples, of the apostles, was not complete, not until after they received the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. And that was when their ministry started. Do you want a ministry that is free from trusting in the flesh? You need the Holy Spirit. Rise on your feet. People want to come to church, they want to receive from God, and they don't want the Holy Spirit. They want to start living their lives the way they've been living. They don't want the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, your, your wood will be without fire. Holy Spirit is the fire 
that when it comes upon the wood, the wood starts generating heat. When the Holy Spirit is upon your life, your life will start radiating fire to the whole world. And you become a citadel or an embodiment of fire in Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, help me today. Lord Jesus, help me to trust in you all the days of my life. Lord Jesus, help me to trust in you. Help me to trust in you. Help me to trust in you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, O oh Lord, my Father, baptize me this hour with the Holy Ghost. Father, baptize me this hour with the Holy Ghost. I don't want to trust in flesh in you. Father, baptize me wrong. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Baptize my family, baptize the church. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you for this divine teaching. Father, let the power in your word that you have listened to this hour, let it set us free from the flesh in the name of Jesus. Open our understanding daily into how to trust in you. And guide us, O oh God, in everything we do so that we can be acknowledging you as our Lord and personal Savior. We cover this week, as we join this week, we cover it with the blood of Jesus and with the Father of God. Every good thing that we desire this week, Daddy, we commit them to your hands, O God. Let their will be done upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's do